now we'll be studying a new chapter which is genetic basis of inheritance of inheritance before we proceed we'll get versed with some chapters which is heredity to some terms which we'll be using throughout the chapter first is heredity which is defined as a transmission of characters from one generation to the next generation or from parents to their offsprings second term is variations variations are the differences between the parents and the offsprings among the offsprings of the same parents and among the individuals of the same species and variation is important the point of view of evolution the third term is genetics which is a branch of biology that deals with the study of heredity and variations the term genetics was coined by William Bateson in the year 1906 which is derived from the greek word genesis which means to grow into we know that organisms are produced by asexual reproduction or plants produced by vegetative propagation and these are organisms are generally identical to their parents asexual reproduction is known to produce organisms which are identical to their parents however sexual reproduction produces organisms which do may show common traits with their parents but are known to have different characters in all from their parents this is known as blending inheritance which can be explained with the help of the genetic or the chromosomal basis of inheritance johann mendel was the first to say that the characters are transmitted from one generation to the next generation to particles which is then called factors but are now known as genes now we'll be studying the experiments which were conducted by johann mendel before he could say or before he could describe the factors for his experiments mendel selected garden pea for his experiments garden pea was selected by mendel because of the following reasons or is uh, following reasons The garden pea is an annual plant and completes the life cycle within 3 to 4 months. Due to the short life span, he could grow 3 generations in a year, which was responsible for the success of the experiments and which was important that the experiment is done within a shorter period of time, growing 3 different generations. Secondly, it is a small and a herbaceous plant. because of which he could grow multiple copies and could produce many seeds so there might a number of results could be obtained third is that the plant is self pollinating and available in the form of various varieties with contrasting characters seven contrasting characters were identified namely include the height of the stem the color of the seed the shape of the seed the pod color the pod shape the flower color and the flower position so a number of contrasting characters were also observed 
and the fourth is that do the flowers are self pollinating they are large enough for easy emasculation which is required for artificial cross and produce fertile offspring easy emasculation that is removal of the male wall which is a stamen is possible now we will be studying some of the important terms related to genetic which is the genetic terminology now we will be studying the genetic terminology the first term is a character which is a feature of the organism the second term is trait which is an inherited character and its detectable variant a trait example of a trait can be being tall or dwarf third term is a factor it is a unit of heredity a, a particle present in the organism which is responsible for the inheritance and expression of a character now we also known factors as genes fourth is a gene it is a particular segment of dna which is responsible for the inheritance and expression of that character the dna is a chromosome and material fifth is alleles or allelomorphs the two or more alternative forms of a gene or a factor are called alleles of each other they occupy identical loci or positions of homologous chromosomes this term was coined by Bateson, William Bateson. Sixth term is being dominant or dominant. It is an allele that expresses its trait even in the presence of an alternative allele that is in heterozygous conditions. Then the seventh term is recessive. It is an allele which is not expressed in the presence of an alternative allele or a dominant allele in heterozygous condition. The next term is a phenotype. The external appearance of an individual for any trait is called as a phenotype for that trait. It is observable and determined by different combination of alleles. In P, for height of the stem, tall and dwarf are with two phenotypes. Tall is determined by TT or TT. Genotype, it is a representation of the genetic material or constitution of an individual with respect to a single character or a set of characters. For example, in P, tall plants have genotype TT or TT and dwarf will have genotype TT. So, genotype for yellow and round seeds can be YY RR or YY RR. So this is the genotype for a particular phenotype. The entire genetic constitution of an organism is known as genome. The next term is homozygous. An individual possessing similar alleles for a particular trait is called as homozygous or pure for that trait. The next term is heterozygous. An individual possessing this similar alleles for a particular trait is called heterozygous or hybrid for that trait. Heterozygous does not breed through for that trait and produces two types of gametes. Example F1 generation hybrids TT which we will be studying later. The next term is pure line which is an individual or a group of individuals or population that is homozygous or through breeding for one or more traits. Next term is a hybrid it is a heterozygous individual produced from any cross involving pure parents having one or more contrast contrasting traits the next term is a mono hybrid it is heterozygous for one trait and produced in a cross between two parents which differ in single pair of contrasting characters the next term is f1 generation where F stands for filial, which means offsprings produced in sexual reproduction. 
in latin filin means son f1 generation refers to the offsprings produced from a cross f2 generation F2 generation refers to the second generation produced by selfing or interbreeding of F1 generation offsprings. And next term is homologous chromosomes, which refers to the morphologically and structurally similar chromosomes present in a diploid cell and a class called homologous chromosomes or simply homologs. So we have the punit square or the checkerboard, which was a diagram that was used to show possibilities of combinations in a particular cross or breeding experiment and was named after Reginald C. Punit who devised this approach. So these are some of the important terms which we will be using throughout this chapter and important to be well versed with. Now we will be studying Mendel's experiment the first of which was a mono hybrid cross which involves two parents which are identical in all respects except for one pair of contrasting characters. So here the parental generation is represented. By P1, the phenotype being tall and dwarf, on meiosis gametes are produced, which are haploid, which on first fertilization give rise to the first filial generation. and fertilization give rise to the F1 generation which is an hybrid tall on self pollination of the F1 generation of the F1 generation we get the F2 generation where the phenotype is hybrid tall and hybrid tall where the genotype here is TT TT on meiosis again we have product which are the gametes on fertilization we have the F2 or the filial generation 2 which can be denoted by the punit square as follows female slash male so this is a dark plant where the rest T being the dominant character or tall being the dominant character the rest plants are tall with TT being pure tall and TT being hybrid tall 
so this is the monohybrid cross the conclusion of which can be monohybrid phenotype ratio which is tall to dog is 3 is to 1 while the genotype ratio for monohybrid crosses pure tall to hybrid tall to pure dwarf is 1 is 2, 2 is to 1 so these are important values in one bundle. now we will be studying Mendel's second experiment which is the dihybrid cross experiment wherein the parents are identical in all respects except for two pairs of contrasting characters here the two correct characters which we have chosen or Mendel had chosen were the seed, seed shape and color where the dominant character was yellow the dominant trait and the round where the recessive one were green small y and wrinkled represented by small r so in the parental generation P1 the phenotype was yellow round and green wrinkled with the genotype being y y r r small y small y small r small r on meiosis we had gametes which were produced which on fertilization gave us the first generation or the f1 generation as y y r r which was hybrid yellow round on selfing f1 we had the phenotypes as hybrid yellow round hybrid yellow round with the genotypes being Y Y R R and Y Y R R. Then we had meiosis, which produced gametes. Four in each case, which were Y R, Y R, Y R, and Y R. Similarly, in this case, we had Y R, Y R, Y R. On fertilization, we can represent the rep result by Q unit square. female male so we have wire yr 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 similarly over here On fertilization, in each of the case, you will get Y Y R R. You will get Y Y R R. Y Y R R. Y Y. Similarly, you will get
again here we will get So here, we can draw a few conclusions. Here the phenotype is obtained in the dihybrid cross or the phenotype ratio is yellow round to yellow wrinkled to green round to green wrinkled which is 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 which can be explained by the earlier chart wherein we have yellow round 1 2 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 we have yellow wrinkled 1, 2 and 3 then we have green round 1, 2 and 3 and last we have green wrinkled is just one so it is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 which the total makes 16 then the genotype ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 4 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 which can be explained as follows we have 1 y y r r then 2 y y r r's then again 1 y y r r then again 2 y y r r's then 4 y y r r 2 y y r r 1 y y r r 2 y y r r and 1 y y r r which can be obtained along the diagonal in the punit square which is 1 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 4 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 so these are the results of the second experiment that Mendel conducted now we will be studying the test cross or the back cross A test cross is a simple method devised by Mendel to verify or test the genotype of the F1 or the F2 or the F3 hybrids. When hybrid expresses recessive trait, example for dwarf pea plant, its genotype is definitely TT which is two recessive traits. But if hybrid is tall, it is not possible to know its genotype. F1 hybrids are, are definitely heterozygous but in F2 generation all tall plants are not heterozygous. 25% may be pure tall. Therefore, to find out whether the tall plant or the any dominant expression is homozygous, that is TT or T or heterozygous, that is TT, a test cross or a back cross can be performed instead of selfing, which a test cross includes 
हाइब्रिड हाइपरफेन हाइब्रिड बीइंग क्रॉस्ड विद होमोजाइगस रिसेसिव पेरेंट सिंस द ऑफस्प्रिंग इज क्रॉस्ड बैक विद वन ऑफ द पेरेंट्स इट इज आल्सो नोन एज बैक क्रॉस Mendel's experimental results or Mendel's experiment can be supported by three of his laws. The first of which is Mendel's law of inheritance. The second, Mendel's law of segregation, and the third, Mendel's law of independent assessment. So the first is Mendel's law of dominance. Second is Mendel's law of segregation. And the third, Mendel's law of independent assessment. The first law says that in a cross between two organisms, pure for any pair or pairs of contrasting characters. The character that appears in the F1 generation is called dominant, and the one which is suppressed is called recessive. The second law says members of an allelic pair in a hybrid re remain together without mixing with each other and separate or segregate during gamete formation. Thus, gametes receive only one of the two factors and are pure for a given trait. Therefore, this is also known as the law of purity of gametes. should be remember that the law of dominance is not universally ap applicable while the law of segregation is universally applicable the law of dominance may be may not be followed in cases such as incomplete dominance or co dominance which we'll be studying later dominance incomplete dominance or co dominance do not follow the law of dominance mendel's third law is the law of independent assessment assortment when the two homozygous parents differing in two pairs of contrasting traits across the inheritance of one pair is independent of the other in other words when a dihybrid or a polyhybrid forms gametes assortment or distribution of alleles of different traits is independent of the original combination in the parents it should be remember that just like the law of dominance even the law of independent assortment is not universally applicable and there are some exceptions to it now we'll be studying some exceptions to the law of dominance of mendel in the form of incomplete dominance and co-dominance in incomplete dominance both the genes of an allelomorphic pair express themselves partially one gene cannot suppress the expression of the other completely thus the pair is not as one dominant and another recessive in such cases there is intermediate expression in fn hybrids an example is the four o'clock plant or the mirabis mirabilis Jalapa plant, wherein the red and white color color flowers, the next generation show to produce pink color flowers, which are an example of incomplete dominance, wherein both the traits are not able to become the dominant traits, and both are expressed. In case of co-dominance. like observed in coat color of cattle both the genes of an allelomorphic pair express themselves equally such alleles which are able to express themselves independently even if present in hybrids are called as co-dominant alleles like for example in case of a cattle the brown and white color cattle traits are to be combined either brown cattle with white patches 
or a white one with brown patches may be seen in the generation following so this is an example of codominance so in case of incomplete dominance the genotypic and phenotypic ratios are identical but in case the phenotype of hybrid is intermediate between the two and in case of co-dominance both the genes are expressed equally so here we have intermediate or partial expression and here complete but equal expression of characters the last part of this chapter will be studying about multiple alleles and pleiotropy multiple alleles are when more than two alternative forms of a gene in a population occupying the same locus or the same number on a chromosome or its homologue observed multiple alleles arise by the mutations of the wild type of gene however the wild type of gene is dominant over all other mutant alleles and multiple alleles do not undergo crossing over for example in drosophila a large number of multiple alleles are known one of which is the series of wing abnormality ranging in size from normal wings to no wings the normal wings is wild type and is denoted by VG plus. So we have normal wings, nicked wings, torched wings, strapped wings, and vestigial or no wings. Which are represented by the genotype. These are the phenotypes and these are the genotypes. Wigny, which is we know VGST for strapped and VG for vestigial. Another good example of multiple alleles is the ABO group in human beings, wherein IA and IB together show codominance, while IA and IB are both dominant over I. The next step is pleiotropy. When a single gene controls two or more different traits, it is called pleiotropic gene, and this phenomenon is called pleiotropy or pleiotropism. Here, the ratio, which is 2 is to 1, becomes 3 is to 1. In pleiotropy, we can further say according to Mendel's principle of unit character, one gene factor controls only one character, but in pleiotropy, one gene can control two characters. One example can be the gene for sickle cell anemia. It's lethal in homozygous condition. while produces sickle cell anemia in heterozygous condition two different expressions are produced by a single gene and this is an example of pleiotropy so now we will be beginning the next chapter which is chromosomal basis of inheritance Heredity can be defined as the inheritance of transmission of characters from one generation to another. Transmission characters from one to another generation. The differences existing between the pa parents and the offsprings along with their siblings is called variations. differences existing
A cell with a nucleus or a eukaryotic cell shows typical chromosomes and cells without nucleus or a prokaryotic cell shows irregular folded mass or genetic material known as nucleoid. In prokaryotes, a chromosome is single stranded and made up of circular DNA. Additional circular DNA may also be found which is called as plasmid which is capable of independent existence without histone proteins. So now we will be studying the chromosomal theory which was proposed by Sutton and Bowery. Proposed by Sutton and Bowery. It is a theory of genetics which identifies chromosomes as the carrier of the genetic material. It states the following gametes, which is sperm and egg, carry all the hereditary characters. They are the link between the parents and the offspring. Gametes carry hereditary characters. Second is the nucleus of gametes contains chromosomes which are known to carry all the hereditary characters so the chromosomes are there in the nucleus of the gamete third is that chromosomes are found in pairs in somatic or diploid cells somatic or diploid cells contain pairs of chromosomes the fourth is that during gamete formation homologous chromosomes pair and segregate or separate independently at meiosis, thus each gamete contains one pair of chromosomes. Gamete formation, meiosis occurs, which gives rise to each cell, each gamete containing one pair of chromosomes, which is also known as a haploid gamete. The last is that during fertilization, the union of sperm and egg restores the diploid number of the chromosome. So the haploid gametes formed combine to give rise to a diploid embryo or its zygote. So this is the chromosomal theory. Now we'll be studying more about chromosomes. Chromosomes are colored bodies which are filamentous bodies present in the nucleus they are visible only during the process of cell division chromosomes have the ability of cell replication and play an important role in heredity variation mutation and evolution heredity variation mutation and evolution of species chromosomes which are morphologically and genetically identical are called homologous chromosomes morphologically and genetically identical number the number of chromosomes may vary from species to species presence of whole sets of chromosomes is called as euploidy it includes haploid conditions wherein one set of chromosomes is present, diploid conditions wherein two sets of chromosomes are found, triploid wherein three sets of chromosomes are found, and tetraploid wherein four sets of chromosomes are found. Talking about the size of the chromosome, the size of the chromosome varies from species to species. Each metaphase chromosome varies from size from 1.1 1 .1 to 33 micrometer length and 0.1 to 2 micrometer thickness shape the shape varies according to the stages of cell division in interphase chromosomes are in the form of chromatic network while in metaphase they show maximum condensation and appear short and thick so interphase they are in the form of the chromatic network and in the metaphase short and thick sh shape is talking about the structure of the chromosomes
so it has parts named the teloma the chromoma the chromonemata the centroma and the satellite A metaphase chromosome has two identical halves called the sister chromatids. Each chromatid is in turn made up of subchromatids called chromonemata. Called sister chromatids. So the two halves of a chromosome. And each chromatid consists of chromonemata. Chromonemata which are there. Yeah. Chromatids lie side by side and are held together at the point which is called the centroma, which holds the chromatids together. The centroma is also called the primary constriction. During cell division, the spindle fibers are attached at the centroma. Besides the primary constriction, additional narrow areas called secondary constrictions are also present. Some of the secondary constrictions are called nuclear organisms because they are necessary for formation of nucleolus. The part of the chromosomes beyond the nuclear organizer is short, spherical and is called the satellite. So the spherical part beyond the nuclear organizer is known as the satellite. The tip of the chromosome is called as a telomer. It has a unique property that it prevents the ends of the chromosome from sticking together but attaches it to the nuclear envelope. So the telomer helps to attachment of the chromosome to the nuclear envelope preventing the attachment to each other. The surface of a chromosome bears number of small swellings called the chromomers, which is seen here, the chromomers. Now we will be talking about the types of chromosomes. According to the position of the centroma, chromosomes are classified into four types, the first being metacentric, second being Submetacentric, third being acrocentric, and the fourth being telocentric. In the first type, the centrum is situated in the middle of the chromosome and it is called as a metacentric. The two arms of the chromosomes are nearly, nearly equal and it appears V shaped during anaphase. So the shape here is V. In submetacentric, chromosome the centroma is situated some distance away from the middle one arm of the chromosome is shorter than the other and it appears l shaped in the anaphase acrocentric is the chromosome in which the centroma is situated near the end of the chromosome and it is called acrocentric one arm of the chromosome is very short while the other is quite long it appears j shaped in the anaphase while in telocentric chromosome, the centrum is situated at the tip of the chromosome and shows only one arm and appears rod shape. So V, L, J and rod are the four types of chromosome based on the position of the centrum. Chromosomes are known to perform different functions such as inheritance of characters, cell division and cell growth. Determination of sex, and also to control the metabolism within our body. Talking about the structure of X and Y chromosomes, which are responsible for sex determination. X chromosome is longer than Y chromosome. X chromosome contains a large amount of euchromatin and small amount of heterochromatin. The euchromatin contains large amount of DNA or genes. The y, the y chromosome contains less amount of euchromatin and thus less genetic material as compared to the X chromosome and is smaller in size than the X chromosome. The chromosomes are known to show homologous 
and non homologous regions also crossing occurs only in the homologous regions non homologous region of x chromosomes contain more genes than that of non homologous region of y chromosome non homologous region of x chromosome contains x linked genes while non homologous region of y chromosomes contains y linked genes so this is all about the x and y chromosomes now we will be talking about linkage and crossing over as the genes are present on the chromosomes they have tendency to inherit it together which is called as linkage all the genes on a chromosome are said to be linked to one another and belong to the same linkage group number of linkage groups of a particular species corresponds to its haploid number of chromosomes or number of pair of chromosomes there are two types of linkages or two kinds of linkages which is complete wherein the linked genes are closely located in the chromosome and do not separate whereas the second type is incomplete linkage wherein the linked genes are widely located on the chromosomes and may separate by crossing over the transmission of body characters from parents to offspring along with sex is called as sex linked inheritance linked inheritance or sex linkage which is classified further into two types which is incomplete sex linkage and complete sex linkage incomplete sex, sex linked genes are located on homologous regions of the x and y chromosomes they do not inherit together because crossing over may occur in these regions which are loosely linked example are the total color blindness retinitis pigmentosa and nephritis etc completely sex linked genes are located on non homologous regions of x and y chromosomes they inherit together as crossing over does not occur and these regions are tightly linked it is seen in the red green color blindness hemophilia and myopia crossing over occurs they are seen in homologous region of the x and y chromosome here there is no crossing over non homologous region of the x and y chromosome also these are loosely bound these are tightly bound or linked talking about crossing over the process by which produces recombination of genes by exchanging corresponding segments between non sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes is called as crossing over the process of crossing over consists of four steps the first is synapsis it occurs in the zygotic stage of prophase of meiosis the homologous chromosomes come close to each other and form a pair this pairing is called as synapsis so pairing is done the homologous chromosomes the second step is crossing over it occurs in the pachytin stage of prophase 1 of meiosis during the process of crossing over two non sister chromatids of byron first break at the corresponding points due to activity of nuclear enzyme called endonuclease which is a scissor the two non sister chromatids cross each other at the point of break and exchange their segments leading to recombinations the point where the crossing over takes place is called as the chiasma on the chiasmata so it occurs in the pachytin stage of meiosis 1 where this occurs in the zygotic stage leading to formation of bivalent in the pachytin stage exchange occurs and the points where crossing over takes place are known as chiasma or chiasmata the third step is crossing over 
after the tetrad formation which occurs during the second step and the fourth and the final stage is terminalization now we will be talking about sex linked inheritance now we will be talking about sex linked inheritance genes located on the non homologous regions of the sex chromosomes but not involved in sex determination are called sex linked genes the body characters controlled by sex linked genes are called as sex linked characters the phenomena of inheritance of sex linked genes is called as sex linked inheritance or sex linkage there are two types of sex linked genes which are x linked which are also known as x linked genes and y linked or holentic genes genes located on the non homologous region of the x chromosome only are called as x linked or sex linked genes the x linked genes have no corresponding allele in the y chromosome The recessive sex linked genes in human beings are responsible for sex linked characters or traits such as hemophilia, color blindness, night blindness, or nectalopia or myopia, and muscular dystrophy. In females, two recessive sex linked genes are required for the expression of sex linked trait, but in males, a single recessive gene can express itself. Talking about a Y linked or a holentic gene, genes located on the non homologous region of the Y chromosomes. are known as y linked genes or holentic genes they inherit along with y chromosome and are expressed only in males now we'll be talking about color blindness color blindness is a sex linked disease in which the person cannot distinguish between red and green colors as both these colors appear gray color blindness is caused by a recessive gene which prevents the proper formation of color sensitive cells in the retina of eye which are necessary for the distinction of red and green colors the genes for normal vision which are dominant and color blindness which are recessive are located on the non homologous region of the x chromosome but the alleles are absent in the y chromosome if gene for normal vision is represented by xc and gene for color blindness as x small c then genotypes of different individuals can be represented as follows The the inheritance of color blindness can be studied with the help of following examples. If a color blind male marries a female with normal vision, that is, if a color blind male marries a female with normal vision, then all the offspring will have normal vision. The sons will have normal vision, but daughters will have, be carriers for the disease. The carriers have normal vision. this can be obtained by fertilization as done in the case of dye and mono hybrid cross similarly if a carrier female which is c x c marries a male with a normal vision then all daughters will have normal vision of which half of them will be carriers for the disease half the sons will be color blind while the remaining half will have normal vision from the above example it is clear that color blind father transmits the disease to his grandson through his carrier daughter the inheritance of characters from the father to his grandson through his daughter is called as criss cross inheritance now we'll be talking about another disease which is hemophilia
Hemophilia is a hereditary blood disease in which blood fails to clot or clots very slowly. The person which carries the recessive gene for hemophilia has deficiency of clotting factors such as the factor 8 and factor 9 where the factor 9 is also known as the Christmas factor. These factors are found in less quantities in the blood so minor injuries can cause continuous bleeding and it is also known as the bleeder's disease. caused by the deficiency of factor 8 and 9 in the blood. The genes for normal clotting which are dominant and hemophilia which are recessive are located on the non-homologous region of the X chromosome but the alleles are absent in the Y chromosomes. If the gene for normal clotting of blood is represented by XH and that for hemophilia by X small h then genotypes of the different individuals can be expressed as follows. Now the inheritance of hemophilia can be studied with the help of the following examples. Example 1. If a hemophilic man such y marries a female with normal clotting of blood, such such, then all the offspring will have normal clotting of blood. The sons will have normal clotting of blood, but daughters will be carriers for the disease. The carriers have normal clotting of blood. The second example can be if a carrier female Mary is a male with a normal clotting of blood. Then all the daughters will have normal clotting of blood, but half of them will be carriers for the disease, while half the sons will be hemophilic, while remaining will have normal clotting of blood. Thus, hemophilia also, like color blindness, shows crisscross inheritance. Now, we will be talking about sex determination in humans. In human being, the chromosomal mechanism of sex determination is of XX, XY type. In human beings, the nucleus of each cell contains 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes. Of these, 22 pairs are of autosomes responsible for the determination of body characters and one pair of chromosomes is of sex chromosomes. So for females, in female, two homomorphic sex chromosomes that is XX are present while in male, two heteromorphic sex chromosomes are XY. That is the genotype of male and female in humans is female, 46 chromosomes is equal to 44 autosomes which are responsible for the body characters plus XX sex chromosomes. Where in males, 46 chromosomes are made up of 44 autosomes and XY sex chromosomes. The method of sex determination which is found in humans is known as chromosomal mechanism of sex determination which is also known as heterogamesis it may be either male heterogamy t or female heterogamy t in males in humans male show heterogamy t In honeybees, sex is determined by the number of sets of chromosomes received by an individual. Such type of sex determination is called haploid diploid sex determination.
the fertilized eggs develop as a female offspring may be queen or a worker and shows diploid that is 32 number of chromosomes an unfertilized egg develops as a male drone by means of parthenogenesis which is development without fertilization and thus the drones have haploid that is 16 number of chromosomes the drones produce sperms by mitosis here in order to retain the number of chromosomes in case of birds ZW ZZ type of sex determination is found in this type males are homogamatic and have ZZ sex chromosomes unlike in humans while females are heterogamatic showing ZW sex chromosomes now we will be studying some of the disorders which are related to chromosomes which are the chromosomal disorders before talking about chromosomal disorders we will be studying some mendelian disorders one such type is thalassemia which is a autosomal inherited disorder characterized by the decrease in synthesis of either alpha or beta globin chain which are responsible for the formation of hemoglobin in the body beta and alpha thalassemia is caused by the deficient synthesis of beta and alpha subunits respectively alpha globin chain is coded by a gene on the 16th chromosome while beta globin chain is coded by a chromosome 11 the disorder results in deficiency of one chain and the relative axis of the other clinically a person suffers from anemia jaundice and variation in size and shape of RBCs size and shape of the red blood corpuscles massive blood transfusion is needed in a normal adult this is equivalent to 10 to 20 units so thalassemia is a quantitative abnormality of polypeptide globin chain synthesis so quantitative abnormality in the polypeptide globin chain synthesis now we will be studying some chromosomal disorders the first is down syndrome or 21 trisomy which is represented by 46 plus 1 is equal to 47 appearance of different types of symptoms is called syndrome this syndrome was described by John Langdon Down and hence the name Down syndrome. It is caused by aneuploidy, which means addition or deletion of one or more chromosomes in diploid chromosome number. Here, an additional chromosome is found on the 21st pair, which leads to three chromosomes on the 21st chromosome giving rise to 46 plus 1 which is 47 number of chromosomes in all it is due to failure of separation of chromosomes or due to non-disjunction during meiosis 
the occurrence of an extra chromosome in diploid chromosome number is called trisomy and is represented by 2n plus 1 the symptoms are folded skin which is epicanthal skin fold downward slanting of eyelids flat face open mouth protruding tongue mental retardation poor skeletal development and simian crease on the palm another chromosomal disorder can be a sex chromosomal abnormality these may be represented in the form of trisomy such as xxy or xyy showing male phenotype of monosomy involving x chromosomes such as 44 plus x male phenotype or monosomy turner syndrome and klein felter syndrome are sex chromosome linked disorders so first we'll study turner syndrome turner syndrome was first described by h h turner and hence the name it is also referred to as x monosomy it is it arises due to the non disjunction during meiosis of either male or female gamete theoretically equal number of klein felter or turner sh syndrome individuals should be born but it does not happen because turner syndrome is fatal in early pregnancy and may lead to death it is rare as compared to klein felter syndrome person with turner syndrome have 45 chromosomes instead of 46 in a normal human being with only one sex chromosome and such a genotype is therefore represented by 44 plus x0 the symptoms include female phenotype short stature webbing of neck and secondary sexual characters do not develop in such individual the second type of sex chromosomal abnormality is klein felter syndrome which is caused due to an extra sex chromosome which may either be an x chromosome or a y chromosome and so the genotype is 44 plus xxy or 44 plus xyy so they are sometimes described as feminized male the sufferer has 47 chromosomes instead of 46 in a normal human being this extra chromosome arises as a result of non disjunction of x chromosomes during meiosis this change in number of chromosomes due to non disjunction may occur during gamete formation the symptoms of this disorder include patients are tall thin sterile and show development of poor sexual characters the test is a very small such per person are known to have normal intelligence however spermatogenesis that is generation of sperms is absent 